In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to this celebration of the 29th Sunday in ordinary time in our beautiful parish, in our magnificent church. Today is also the World Mission Sunday, it is this Sunday when we are reminded as an ordinary people, perhaps an ordinary parishioners, that our mission goes far beyond our own homes, that through our prayers and sacrifices, our support of those who go out there and preach, we are invited to be missionaries of today. I saw a lot of traffic before this Mass. It makes me very happy. Every one of you is very dear and special to me and to this parish. And the fact that we are coming back, we are gathering as a family of faithful, raising our voices, raising our hearts to Almighty God, and praying for His guidance and blessings is so important for this town and for our parish. Let us therefore reflect for a moment on this past week on the moments when we have perhaps failed to do God's will in our lives. And let us ask for his pardon, mercy, and guidance. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to walk as children of light. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your glory fills all creation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. 
Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodias saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And then he said to them, Then we pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God the Gospel of the Lord. The brothers and sisters, for almost 100 years, from 1926, when Pope Pius XI designated this next to last Sunday of the month of October as the World Mission Sunday, every single parish and every single Catholic community throughout the world pauses for a moment on this Sunday to reflect on one of the most important aspects of our Christianity. And that is that what we have received came from God to all of us and we received it to enjoy it, but received it also to share it. In fact, whatever our personal stories are, and I know we can trace them to different towns and countries and years and circumstances, sometimes very difficult or sometimes just very ordinary, 
every one of us is sitting here today because there was someone before us who got up and went to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to places and countries and towns so our ancestors can receive it and they gave it to us, to our grandparents and parents, our family members and friends, and whatever our personal journey of faith or story can be, we are sitting here today as great beneficiaries of the commitment and love for the gospel of the Lord of so many who have come before us. And that is why this Sunday has a, a very profound personal dimension for every one of us. On one side, we are the beneficiaries of those who have come before us, but we also are called to be the contributors for those who will come after us. In that uninterrupted link of preaching the gospel, there is a very important place for you and for me our roles are different, every one of us. This Mass will be over in a couple of moments and will be sent and go to different homes and places during this week. But wherever we are, we are called to be those disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to experience our faith in the community when we gather for Mass, but then we go out there and bring it to even more brothers and sisters. We don't have to preach it, perhaps it will be enough. We will just live it authentically during this coming week and every day of our lives. And that is the invitation, affirmation, but also challenge for you and for me that comes directly from our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why it's so symbolic that on this 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time, not directly connected to missions, we read in the second reading the initial part from the letter of St. Paul to Thessalonians. Bible scholars are telling us that that letter is kind of unique because while in many other letters Pope writes on his own behalf and uses singular, me, I, in this particular letter, the entire language is filled with expressions like us, we, ourselves. Just the first words already indicate that he's not writing on his own behalf only. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, the companions on the journey of Paul as he evangelized and is writing from Corinth to the community in Thessaloni, Thessalonica that he established and supported. He's writing about the great call that we have received. That's why he's writing, we give thanks to Almighty God for you, remembering you in our prayers unceasingly, calling to mind your work of faith, your love, your endurance, and in hope. And as this letter goes on, talking about all different aspects of Christian life, of that community of faith, or many others, Paul actually calls them and us the imitators of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who take the message, which is not ours, take it as a treasure, we cherish it, we share it, and in that process, we find happiness in this world and life everlasting. That's why we came also this evening. We came to listen to the Word of God, to be fed with His Word, to be fed with the Eucharist, and then go home and be those ordinary missionaries in places where the good Lord sends us bringing his love and our conviction that we find happiness only in our friendship and close relationship with him. 
This month of October is also filled with many symbolic dates connected to the papacy of John Paul II, now Saint John Paul II. In fact, only a couple of days ago, on the 5th of October, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of his visit to our own diocese and to our own state. I have heard from a number of you during this past week how you still remember that memorable mass at the Giant Stadium, whether you were there in, the, in that rain, torrentious rain, or maybe sharing the excitement of that papal visit in front of the television or with your loved ones. Tell you those youngsters that are with us how exciting that day was. Because we felt that someone who loves Jesus very much and is one of his successors, successors of St. Saint, Saint Peter in preaching the gospel, came into our midst and brought that message of God's love. There have been many different names given to Pope John Paul II, but some historians call him a pilgrim pope, a pope from, who from the very beginning of his papacy hit the road because he realized that he needs to be missionary himself, that he cannot be locked behind the doors of the Vatican, then he needs to go and meet the people. This past Friday, we celebrated the 42nd anniversary of his election to the papacy. And in a couple of days, on the 22nd of October, which is the day of his papal inauguration, we'll celebrate the actual feast day of St. John Paul II. So if you have some special intentions, perhaps it's time to pile them up in preparation for that feast day and ask him to guide us and intercede for us from heaven above as we try to live authentically the message of our Lord Jesus Christ and be the missionaries in our own times. I mentioned that memorable mass at the Giant Stadium because it was just so different. It wasn't a church. Many of us were packed there. That rain came, but there was an incredible sense of peace. The Pope's family was prepared a long time before, but it fits so perfectly into that setting. Because in his homily, John Paul II on that day reminded us that there is a very special image of the church image that we are invited to live and imitate every day of our Christian lives. He told us that the kingdom is among us and uh, that kingdom doesn't depend on us. That it came from God and we are all sharers in this great kingdom. Reminded us in these words, the kingdom is always present despite our own weaknesses and wherever we are, because the Father himself has brought it into the world already to the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the day of Pentecost, the Pope said, the Holy Spirit never ceases to communicate the powers, power of Christ's kingship and to invite men and women like you and me, to find salvation in the one who is the true way, the truth, and the life. So what did he do? And Pope continued, how he's bringing that kingdom into New Jersey, into Hillsdale, into the lives of our families. He said, in order to bring us this salvation, Jesus established the church to be kind of a sacrament, a sign, an instrument of intimate union with God for all mankind. Among the many magnificent images which the Bible uses, it describes the church as the one, as the house 
in which God dwells with his people. And here is the image that I mentioned earlier. It describes the church, the community of the faithful, as the house. And then he continued with an invitation for New Jersey, for the United States, for Hillsdale and for all surrounding towns that make up this beautiful parish. Lord wants his church to make a home in the midst of every people, grafting the gifts of salvation onto the history and culture of every nation. In the gospel, Jesus sends his disciples into people's houses to bring them his peace. In every place where people make their homes and live their lives, a disciple of Jesus must arrive and say, the kingdom of God is at hand. The brothers and sisters, there are many out there who are on this day working and spreading the message of the gospel in pretty far away and at times dangerous places. They are our brothers and sisters, we call them missionaries, ordinary lame men and women, sisters and brothers, priests, bishops. They go into the places so that message of the gospel can be proclaimed even in our own times. Today on this World Mission of uh, World uh, Sunday that when we remember all missions, we want to give thanks and praise to Almighty God that they are and they live those missionaries of our own days. But perhaps more importantly, we have gathered once again to listen to the Word of God and to leave this place as his missionaries, as those who receive the Word of God, cherish it, and through our words and kindness and love, try to bring it into the most ordinary circumstances of our everyday lives. That is our place. That is our mission. And that is our calling. May the good Lord bless us on this journey, and may he allow us to touch the lives of our brothers and sisters through our own missionary work in our own times and in our own ordinary circumstances. Amen. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. became man. For our sake was crucified on a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As members of the body of Christ, let us make our needs known to God who loves and cares for all of us. Our response this evening is a ward, hear our prayer. That the church might respond to the call to build a beloved community dedicated to inclusion, healing, and justice, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the work and dedication of peacemakers may bring an end to hatred and violence in our world, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That those displaced by war violence, and natural disasters may find safe refuge, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That all those who share in the ministries of this parish community may bring compassion and understanding to all those in need, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That the sick may find comfort in the care of loved ones and healing through the hand of God, especially Pawel Socha, we pray to the Lord that those who have died and gone before us in faith now share in God's eternal vision, especially Richard Baviello Sr., John Gleason, Steve Chandler, Everett Morrison, sorry, Everest Morrison, Jeannie Butler, Ernestina and Norberto Gonzalez. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, hear these prayers of your faithful people and provide us with the peace and comfort that only you can offer. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. 
may no one accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word to whom we make all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humble we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, 
and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Everett Morrison, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen. Remember also our brothers and sisters and your servant John Gleason who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, through who him we hit him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray now to our Heavenly Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from the participation in heavenly things, you may be held by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. We ask this to Christ our Lord. We just have a few announcements.
On Monday, November 2nd, our annual All Souls Mass of Remembrance will be celebrated here in the church at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome, and we encourage you to come. The names of those buried from St. John's, as well as those names that have appeared in the bulletin, will be remembered that night. If you have a loved one who has passed since last November to the present and would like their name listed, please contact Mary Musella. This Mass will also be live-streamed. On Facebook, we announced our annual participation in Bag a Lunch, which brings fresh produce to many food pantries across northern New Jersey. There will not be any bags this year in the church due to COVID, but we will send you an email link for donations. The idea is to give the cost of a lunch. For every dollar donated, we feed 10 families. We have been in the top 10 groups for donations every year for four years. Let's keep the streak going. That link will also be on Facebook and is currently on our website already on the events page. Bible study, James, Put Your Faith to Work, begins this Thursday, October 22nd at 7.30 p.m. To sign up, please either visit Facebook or our website, or check one of the bulletin boards in the back of the church on your way out. And lastly, mark your calendar, because the date of Monsignor Peter's installation as our pastor has been set for November 15th at the 12 noon Mass. All of these events and a few others are up on our website. If you go to the homepage, there's a little button that says Upcoming Events. There may be some other things that you're interested in attending as well. Thank you. For a final blessing, just a word of thank you for your presence once again. I know it requires a little courage and a lot of sacrifice to come these days, but uh, uh, our presence is very precious and very special to the Lord also. And greetings to our brothers and sisters who are not with us, but will be watching and watching this on live streams and on the internet. Uh, we look forward to the day when we'll pack this church once again. And meanwhile, let us just remember each other in our prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Storm.